So wherever you are, if we're on all fours and we're taking pigeon, grab any props to support you, maybe a block or a cushion, and let's slide the left knee forward to the inside of the left thumb. And we angle the lower part of the leg rather than the thigh. So that left heel comes over towards the right hip. You can move that right leg back. Now, if that left hip is lifted quite high, then you could put a little blanket under there or a block. If you're on your back, you'll have your left ankle crossing to your right thigh and hugging that right thigh in. And if we're here, we can lift and lower a few times. Inhaling, come up. Exhaling, fold. Feel free to do this as much as needed to feel comfortable. Relaxing, releasing to wherever it feels right for you. So maybe we stay upright or maybe we fold forward. So this is where it can be helpful too to use a prop to support the upper body. But we wanna be mindful of not just rolling into that left side. So you can keep that right hip drawing down. So we want those hips level. And then how do we know if we need to modify it? Well, whenever your knees are telling you something, please listen. We have nothing to prove to our joints or spine. So that's a good rule of thumb to follow in yoga, in any type of physical practice, really. If your knees are talking to you, whatever is happening, doesn't even matter where it is or what you're feeling at this point, then get out, modify. And so that's why it can be helpful to just come on the back. We have to remember that when the hips are really tight, if the hips won't budge, we'll tend to land in the knee in terms of uncomfortable sensation. So we just don't want to feel anything compromising ever in joints or spine. But that's very different than discomfort or sensation that is taking place in the connective tissues, in the fascia, in the muscles. And with that, we just want to practice breathing, relaxing into that sensation. That's why I call that productive sensation rather than perhaps compromising sensation. Let's take a few more breaths here as you settle in to where you're feeling this pose awaken your body. Again, can we practice just observing the sensation, the discomfort? Maybe we even observe the expectations of the mind or the preferences of the ego, but we don't have to react to it. Meaning we can observe, oh, my left hip is tight. This pose is a little uncomfortable. That's very different than berating those hips or going down the rabbit hole as to why those hips are punishing you with tightness. And it sounds ridiculous, but the internal conversations we have against our body day in and day out have to stop. Our body isn't our slave <laughs> and it's not trying to rebel against us, right? Sensation is simply a message being communicated. That's it. And then we can shift how we interpret that. Befriending the body, coming to understand the sensation rather than criticize it or judge it. So again, that could be helpful in life as we navigate against those uncomfortable things around us and in other people. So let's slowly take a breath here. We're gonna to prepare to come up. <clears throat> if you're on your back, you can rock side to side before we release. And then if you're here, we can make our way up, pressing into those hands. And then finding your reset here, maybe it's downward dog, maybe it's three-legged dog, reaching that left leg into the air. You can always come to pause in your plank or child's pose. Feel free to take a vinyasa if you want to rinse out the spine. And if you're on your back, you're welcome to stay there, maybe hug the knees into the chest. As we're going to go right on over to that other side. <clears throat> And so from where you are, if we're ready to take side two, we can set up accordingly. So again, if you're on your back, it would be right ankle to left thigh, hugging left thigh in. And if you're following my lead here, we bring that right knee to the inner wrist, angle the right foot over towards that left hip. So there's a lot of cueing up there that is telling us to put the shin parallel. I wouldn't do that until your hips are nice and open. Because again, if you do that and the hips can't go there, then the knee will take it. Meaning in not a good way in terms of misalignment. So finding that setup for yourself, tuning into your body, and then you decide. Maybe we pause upright for a few moments. Maybe you lift and lower, just getting a sense of what's showing up on the second side before we dive in and hold the pose. 
Just like on that first side, try to keep that left hip moving towards the floor rather than rolling off into that right hip. And then bring your mind to a single point of focus. And as you bring attention and awareness into what this shape on this side has awakened in terms of sensation. We'll just practice that ability to observe, to witness without casting any judgment or preference on what we're feeling, where we're feeling it. Take a few more breaths here before we come out of this pose. And as we prepare to release the second side, just again noticing the sensations, notice where the mind has gone. And if you're on your back, you're welcome to rock side to side in preparation for the release. And if you're in full pigeon, we can start to make our way back up, walking the hands back, perhaps pausing at the top, and then find your reset, three-legged dog, downward dog, perhaps plank, you want to go through your chaturanga. Lots of options. And then when you feel complete with those movements, again, if you're on your back, you can simply roll over and join us in child's pose. <clears throat> and then pausing here, offering another full breath in and a long breath out. 